welcome students so in the previous lecture what we learnt is the lower bound of chromatic polynomials how to kind of define or find out the uh, lower bound of the chromatic polynomials using standard theorem so we introduced to a new term which is the independent number so this is the first theorem the chromatic number is greater than or equal to the number of vertices divided by the independent number and the second theorem was this omega g is the click number so chi g which is a chromatic number is greater than or equal to omega g so these are the two uh, theorems related to lower bound that we talked about in the last lesson now coming to the next one which is the upper bound so we now define the upper bound of chromatic number for generic graphs let me first uh, draw a generic graph which is a little complicated which might show as a little complicated in nature so i am drawing a graph and i will explain the upper bound in context of this okay so this is a graph say a b c d e f g h i now uh, before i get into the theorem let me explain a couple of terms one is the capital delta g so in a graph we know that every vertex has a certain degree what is the degree number of edges which is attached or uh, which is connected to that particular vertex so say for example the vertex c has three edges connected so it is having a degree of 3 same way when i think about uh, this particular uh, uh, vertex f it also has three edges connected so the degree is 3 now if i talk about g it has only two vertices connected it is 2 the same thing changes if i make this one as a complete graph i connect all of them together right now this b c f g h becomes a complete graph and the degree now changes c becomes 1 2 3 4 5 so it becomes 5 in place of 3 same thing for f it becomes 1 2 3 4 no it becomes 4 instead of 3 and g becomes 1 2 3 4 4 instead of 2 so we find out for each of the vertices a it is 2 for i it is 2 for h it is 1 2 3 4 5 5 for b it is 1 2 3 4 4 uh d it is 2 e it is 2 so what we can see is the highest degree we can see is 5 right so uh we call that highest degree as capital delta g so in this particular graph the highest degree is 5 right at the same time uh say for example uh d it has a value of 2 right so this is represented by small delta g and this is equal to 2 now coming to the theorems what the theorems say is chromatic number chi g the uh, when we are defining the upper bound so chi g is less than or equal to so chi g is less than or equal to capital delta g plus 1 so this is the general theorem now there is a specific version to this theorem which we call a brooks theorem what that says is in case delta g this capital delta g is greater than or equal to 3 <coughs> in that case chi g is less than or equal to 
just delta G <coughs> and not delta G plus 1. Okay. So, this is called the Brooks theorem. This is one of the theorems that we can use. Now, let's see how we can use the Brooks theorem. Say, for example, for this particular graph, if I want to figure out using Brooks theorem and maybe one of the lower bounds theorem, how to find out the chromatic number, we'll figure out. So, uh, let's investigate this graph, right? And we saw that capital delta G is equal to 5 because the highest degree is 5 here. Right, uh, this is also 5 and we have uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So, uh, we have the highest degree as 5. Now, we can apply Brooks theorem because delta G is greater than or equal to 3. Therefore, we can definitely say that chi of G, a chromatic number, is less than or equal to 5. Right, so this is our conclusion number 1 using Brooks theorem. Now we can also see that there is a subgraph of this whole graph G which is having 5 vertices 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and all the vertices are adjacent to each other. Right? So basically this is a clique also and clique having clique number 5. So what we can use is this theorem which says chi of g should be greater than or, or equal to the click number which is in this particular graph 5. So, this is our conclusion number 2 using the Lua bound theorem. So, now we see that chi of g is less than or equal to 5, chi of g is greater than or equal to 5. To make these both conditions satisfy, what we have to conclude is chi of g is equal to 5 okay? or the chromatic number for this particular graph is 5. This is a uh, simple solution to the chromatic number of a graph. Now uh, let us move on to the, so uh, this is a Brooks theorem, I will leave it out here and I will move on to the next theorem. This next theorem is called the Zacharis, Zacharis Weef theorem. Zacharis Weef theorem. What does that say? It says that chromatic number of a graph, of any regular graph, uh, is less than or equal to the max of delta G. So, if the graph is split into multiple smaller components or subgraphs, so maximum for each of them we have to calculate the uh, minimum degree and all those minimum degrees, from all those minimum degrees we have to take the maximum one and add with one. How can we show that how it works? So, let us take another example. So, let us take this graph as an example. Okay. So, A, B, C, D, E. Okay. This is a graph. Now, I can split it up into three components, right? One is A, B, C, which is the first one sorry a b c next we have the a c d so a c d and we also have this one a e okay so a e we call this g dash g double dash and g triple dash okay now we see that for g dash, the degree for each of the vertices, this is 2, this is 2, this is 2. So, delta, small delta of g dash is equal to 2. For here, it is again the same thing. So, small delta of double dash is also 2. And for this one, it is 1. So, small delta of g triple dash 
is equal to 1. So now I can apply the zecker swift theorem and I can conclude that chi of g is less than or equal to the max of 2, 2, and 1. So 2, 2, and 1 plus 1, which is less than equal to, so max of 2, 2, 1 is 2, 2 plus 1, less than equal to 3. So this is as per the zecherus swift theorem, we can conclude that chi of g is less than equal to 3. Uh, this is all about the theorems related to chromatic number. I will take a pause here and in the next lecture, I will start with the chromatic polynomials and explain how to derive what chromatic polynomials are in the first place and then how to derive chromatic polynomials for regular graphs, how to derive chromatic polynomials for the general graphs. Stay tuned. Thank you.